blue mini just kind of it's kind of a blue mini it's a nice car but it's kind of a blue mini because uh unsuspecting camaro v8s and mustangs kind of get eaten alive by this car so it's kind of a mean little electric that it's got some spunk to it this is john wayland a builder of electric cars john builds evs by himself right out of his garage he's one of those true believers who is committed to finding an alternative to the internal combustion engine the first time i hit it we burned rubber all the way out the driveway with the tires smoking it twisted the drive line, cracked the transmission in half, and came to rest out in the street while all this fluid. I was going, oh, right, this is great, because I had no idea it had that much power. Come on, let's go for electric cruise. I mean. I won't use the clutch to take off. I'm in gear and I just ease on the accelerator. Off we go. You won't find too many uh, 1972 vehicles that run this smoothly and quietly, I wouldn't think. Now I'm gonna leave it in fourth gear on a dead stop. I'm not gonna floor it or I'm just gonna take off. Well, I think I'll wait till. But that's the beauty of the electric car. You can just leave it in top gear and just motor away. What's unique about what we're, we're doing right here? The car is on, and yet there is no noise. Nothing's running. Nothing's throbbing, spewing out emissions, heat. It's pretty unique. We're on right now? We're on right now. You hear nothing. You hear nothing. And then we just step on the accelerator. We start moving. Silently, of course. And we're at 60 already. What's interesting about the electric car, uh, because of the torque of the electric motor, you don't have to shift. Uh, this car is spirited and fun, but you can take off in high gear if you'd like. Um, you can take off in second gear, third gear. You can drive it like an automatic, or you can use the gears. And this particular car is performance oriented, so I like to use the gears, it's more fun. Uh, you get a little bit better acceleration that way. And this has been an electric car for approximately 18 years now. And um, it's been extremely reliable and high on the fun factor. As you can see, it picks right up. Probably uh, well above the speed limit, so we better slow down a little bit. When you're in top gear, you hear nothing uh, uh, but the wind. The wind and the tires and the birds chirping, and it gives you a good feeling. It's, it's kind of like riding a bicycle, only it goes a lot faster. And in, in, the, in its former life, this was a buzzing, noisy little economy car that, uh, you know, was uh, pretty raw. In electric form, it's, uh, it's real pleasant. Uh, you can hear all the other cars around us making all these uh, sounds, all wasting uh, energy, idling for no real good reason, only because they have to. Now we're in second gear, and I can take off in second, or I can take off even in third if we want to, uh, because of the torque of the motor. We're in third gear right now from a dead stop. It's not a problem. How long would we be able to ride along like this? This is a short range car. Uh, it'll do about 30 miles like this. What's the, what are the things I'm looking at there? There's meters down there, the traction vaults, accessory vaults. Again, these are kind of low tech compared to what we're doing presently. And this car was constructed three, four years ago. Point uh, to them so I can see them. These are analog gauge. Of this, this is the voltage of my main traction pack, which shows that we've got lots of power. And this is the voltage of the accessory system, the 12 volt for the headlights, the horn, the wipers, and of course the sound system. Everything's in good shape, and uh, we're just rolling along here. So I used to have a, a, a sticker on the back of the window that said electrically, uh, powered by electricity. I think it said powered by electricity or electric power. It was a pretty bold statement. I wanted uh, the V8s that I was beating to know what passed them. 
but after a while, it, it, it began to look a little tacky. The cars got a real pretty paint job, and I just thought, well, I'll go, go back to a little bit more of a stealth mode. Um, I like letting people know it's electric, but uh, this particular car, I've kind of backed off on that a little bit. Do you have, can you, is it, what's the cost to operate it? What do you say per mile? Can you compare that to the gas? Uh, I'm not good on the per mile thing, although it's been done. I can tell you it costs about one-fifth of what it costs to run a gasoline car. It costs me about 30 cents to fill this up for 30 miles of driving. So compared to the cost of gasoline, that's about one-third to one-fourth. But then there's the issue of zero maintenance. There's really nothing to do with this car. There's no antifreeze, no oil, no filters, no tune-ups, no spark plugs, no mufflers. Heck, there isn't even an exhaust system. The only thing you figure into the cost is the battery replacement. And these batteries are good for anywhere from uh, a low of two years to a high of five or six, and typically around four years. Uh, and that works out to be a couple hundred dollars a year. So the cost is dramatically less. And it always runs the same, whether it's snowing outside or it's sunny like today, it always runs good. It always has full power. Altitude doesn't affect it. Temperature doesn't affect the way the motor performs. Uh, electric vehicles are really wonderful. It's, uh, I always tell people, once you've driven an, in an EV, you'll never go back. And that's the way I feel about it. So I don't really like showing this whole bunch of cord here. So if you, because normally it's just right to the wall. So let's not show that part. We can show this part, okay? Okay. Um, many times I'm asked, you know, it's kind of funny how people are. Well, don't you have to plug it in? Like it's a big deal. And, and I always go, Gee, I think it's a lot bigger deal to go to a gas station, get up from your house, drive somewhere, and pay some slob to pour gasoline over the side of your car. You know, no, this is really, really hard. Watch this. Really tough. You take the power cord, and you plug it in, you walk away. Car is now on charge. Under how the hood. Long, how long will it take to, uh, to, to get a full tank as it were? Well, we just took a, about a 15 minute cruise and it will take about a half hour to replenish what we just took out. Uh, if I hooked it up to a fast charger, it'd be there in five minutes, but we're gonna go have some lunch. It'll be all filled up when we get back, ready to go again. Under the hood, I'll show you one little thing here, is when you plug it in, I like to monitor what kind of current I'm drawing, especially if I'm plugging in away from home. And it just lets me know how much power we're drawing out of the wall. And that's this gauge right over here. And we're drawing 11 amps out of the wall. That's about what a hair dryer would draw. Batteries are like muscles. They, they like to be exercised. Uh, I've uh, picked up used electric cars that someone hasn't driven a lot. And they say the batteries are dead. They're ruined. And I just start driving and charging and driving. They just come back like a muscle. And, and a month later, they're like new batteries again. But they do like to be exercised. So. We say, if you have it, use it. There you go. On charge. Unbelievably, this compact power unit here is going to replace it all. It's pretty amazing. Uh, this is made by Advanced DC Motors. It's a 9-inch motor. We rate them in the diameter of the motor. Uh, this is a 100 horsepower peak power motor. And you can see we've already fabricated an adapter plate and a spacing system. And this will enable this motor to be lowered into the engine compartment just like the old internal combustion engine was, but of course free up lots of engine space. And uh, the, this is called the motor hub adapter. It slides onto the motor and is bolted to it, and this mimics the end of the crankshaft of the internal combustion engine. When we pull the other engine out and we remove its flywheel, it'll look exactly like this, and this spacing will be the same. And then we've already taken another Datsun <coughs> flywheel that used to weigh 29 pounds, and we shaved it down to 18 pounds. It, with the electric motor, there's no need to have the large diameter with the ring gear for starting. We don't start anything. We don't need the weight for torque because the motor has plenty of torque. We just simply need the flywheel to be big enough to hold the pressure plate. And this bolts right onto the front of this. And it'll, you see how it all fits on here. And then that's the process. So at the end of the day, this will be under the hood powering the, the vehicle. And instead of a gas tank, we'll have batteries. By the end of the day, the, this will be powering the, the, the little truck back here quietly, cleanly, smoothly. 
And instead of a smelly old gas tank, we're going to have a compartment in part of the bed that will hold clean, powerful Optima batteries.